Alright guys, so I'm not sure if you can believe this, but there's only three episodes left of Samurai Jack until it's done. Until it's done for good. And here we go. We are on um, episode eight, which is the third to last episode. Um, and I really liked a lot of things in this episode, but there's also a lot of things that I kind of didn't like. Um, one thing I did like is uh, Jack has improved vastly. Um, and by that I mean he's back to the way that he used to be. Because Jack, throughout this entire new fifth season, has been, you know, angry all the time. He's been kind of going crazy and insane. But now he's like a completely different character. And by a completely different character, I mean the character he used to be before the 50 years. Um, which I think is really interesting. But there's so many things that happen in that with him in this episode that I'm so glad about. Like, he, he's, he's naive again. Like, there's a scene um, where he's going to eat this thing that's going to turn his head into a fish and he's like i'm sure it's fine and then the guy the uh, the guy who was selling the the food was like yeah it's good and he was like see it's good the guy said it was so i i love how they're still showing jack to be this naive um character it's one of the things i used to love about jack uh but they end up going into this elevator where they're surrounded by like these cats um, which I think is funny that he, he finally got rid of the fish head uh, before he went in there because the cats probably would have wanted to kill him immediately if he still had the fish head because cats eat fish, haha. <laughs> um, but there's a funny joke that happens in here because the, the cats end up pushing him and Ashi closer and closer together until they're like right in front of each other. And then um, they're both like, oh, uh, this is kind of awkward. And then Ashi is like, uh what's poking me and so it's it's supposed to be like a dick joke like you're supposed to think that he's getting like a like you know he's, it's his dick but they they look down and it's just his sword it's that <laughs> i actually kind of laughed at that that was kind of funny um but this episode mainly revolves about the the growing romance between jack and ashi which i expected don't get me wrong i expected it and I'm probably going to get a lot of people to bash me or, or disagree with me here when I say this because I know a lot of people were really kind of like rooting for this to happen. I don't like this development with the two, with the two characters um, because, I don't know, it just feels forced to me. Like, just because there's a male and a female, you know, protagonist traveling together, they don't have to fall in love. You know, it just feels forced to me. It feels unnecessary, and it feels like it's not really going to aid the plot that much. Like, why can't they just be friends? Like, I know people are probably going li to listen to this, uh, um, listen to this and say, "Oh, are you complaining that they're falling in love?" I'm not complaining that they're falling in love. I'm just saying it's just kind of like I expected it, but I kind of was hoping they wouldn't go this route because it's just kind of cliche. Because uh, we've seen it a million times, and it it just feels forced because. I don't know, they, they were just hating each other a few episodes ago, and now all of a sudden they're kind of lovey-dovey by touching each other, and I don't know, like I said, it just feels kind of forced to me. I know I'm going to piss off a lot of you guys by saying that, but it, it's just my opinion. Um, but yeah, they're fighting off the cats, and again, the fight scenes in, in Samurai Jack now have just vastly improved over the original. Um, but they end up jumping out the window and getting on a uh, and, and getting outside and escaping from the cats, uh, and there's a scene that happens immediately after this, which is another thing I missed extremely from the old series, was every time Jack would travel or every time Jack would go to uh, a new area, they would almost always do this montage of having some beautiful music in the background while showcasing this beautiful scenery of the land, and it's really giving you such a such a feeling, and it's like like you're experiencing the world of Samurai Jack and it's just this beautiful music with with no not no real audio no real dialogue nobody's talking it's just this beautiful scenery Gendy Tartakovsky really knows how to tell a story and show um, you know landscapes and character emotions without really needing any dialogue and he's one of the few cartoon creators these days that really seems to get and understand that um, we get we get a scene where Jack actually ends up making 
a hat uh, for both him and Ashi, which is very reminiscent of the old straw hat he used to have. Unfortunately, they end up losing it about halfway through the episode, um, but it was a nice little nod. Uh, they end up going through a thunder thunderstorm and end up getting locked up. Not locked up, but they end up going inside of this ship to get shelter because no, it's not a thunderstorm. I guess it's a sandstorm, uh, but they need to get shelter until the sandstorm blows over. Um, and uh, they end up encountering these leech things that once they leech onto you, they start, they're like infecting you with poison. Um, but Jack, it, one of them infects Ashi, but Jack does the, <laughs> he sucks out the poison, but I always like to, like to quote, um, uh, Fo not Foster's Home, but Billy and Mandy when, uh, with Dracula, who's like, uh uh, we don't suck, we scrape and lick. <laughs> For those of you who remember Billy and Mandy. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, Jack and Ashi are continuing to go through. And they get, they end up getting further through, and then basically all the leeches come together and they form this giant monster thing. Um, I, I don't know. This whole episode almost seems kind of filler-ish e to me. Like none of this really is affecting the plot that much, which I find is really intriguing because there's only three episodes left of the show. You would think that this would be the time, if any, that they really need to hit home with all the rest of the episodes they have left uh, because I honestly thought they were going to meet Aku at the end of this but this didn't really do much of anything other than grow Jack and Aku's relationship not J Jack and Aku Jack and Ashi's relationship it didn't really do anything else to the plot other than that because they teamed up together and they fought this monster uh, after escaping a sandstorm but other than that, there wasn't really anything major that happened this episode that makes you, like, I don't know, need to see it. Other than the fact that you see the relationship between Jack and Ashi grow this episode. But it just doesn't seem, this episode seems very fillery to me, is my, is my really only complaint. But basically they end up going inside this laboratory and they end up finding this weapon, this little what looks like a C4 bomb um, that's able to defeat this uh, slime beetle creature thing but the thing is that they can't get it to work so they're fighting the creature <clears throat> hilarity ensues as uh, the monster rips apart uh, Ashi's clothes as she gets naked and Jack gets embarrassed and takes off his uh, robe and puts it on Ashi um, which I feel is even more fan service because we haven't seen Jack without his robe in a long time. Usually that usually when that happened in Samurai Jack is when kind of shit got real. <clears throat> That's kind of when when Jack was usually going all out because his his gi would get ripped. Um, but he ends up throwing it on her so she has clothing to wear. And Jack ends up going for a last ditch effort trying to activate it. Uh, they end up getting covered in the leeches that are burning them. Uh, but he figures it out at the last second, and it ends up destroying the leeches, basically. And uh, they end up looking at each other, and then they make out at the end. And that's how the episode ends, is they just kiss. And like I said, it's just, I don't know, it just felt really forced to me, you know? Like, we didn't need this relationship. Like, this relationship between Jack and Ashi didn't need to be formed. I don't really understand the what story they're trying to tell here with Ashi because Ashi's already um you know she's already turned to the good side what I think would be cool is maybe she has a crush on Jack but Jack you know doesn't acknowledge her or doesn't um you know doesn't acknowledge her doesn't anything until maybe a few episodes and then she does something like saves his life or something and then he acknowledges her like I feel like this could have been better handled in my opinion because right the way it is it just feels rushed like Jack really almost has no real reason to fall in love with her other than the fact that she's hot like and and that's that's the reason why I feel this relationship was so forced and so rushed because there's not really a real reason there's kind of a reason why Ashi would like him, 
and that's just because he's the samurai. He's you know this legendary figure of the, of their world, um, and he, you know, has done so much to help. But I just don't understand why he has a thing for her, considering she tried to uh, kill him. <laughs> She tried to kill him in the past few episodes and how she's the daughter of Aku. Jack almost has no real reason or motivation to like her, in my opinion, other than the fact that she's hot. And I think that that's kind of lazy writing, in my opinion. Um, don't get me wrong, I'm not bashing Samurai Jack or anything. I love all of the episodes that have come out so far. This is just one where I'm like, ah, uh, this is, I didn't like it, you know? That's just me, though. Um, yeah, that was the review. That was the episode. Next week is really interesting because they show a next episode preview, but they don't really show you anything, which means that next week is probably going to be a really big episode because they don't really show you anything that happens. Jack is just saying, huh, this place looks familiar. And then it, the whole 30-second preview is him just walking around a place um, and silently. It's just silent. He's just walking. And then it says Samurai Jack, you know, this Saturday at 11.30 or at 11 or whatever. And then the clip after that is him, him looking at the ground and going, oh, like opening his eyes and gasping. And then it just says, only an adult swim. And then it ends. Like, so the, the preview really doesn't show anything. So it's, it's leaving me very excited because if the preview doesn't want to show anything, like, like if, when they were editing the preview, they were like, wow. There's so many things in this that's going to be spoilerific or that's going to blow people's minds that we don't want to show this right now. We just want to, sh you know, just this is going to be their only preview it is incredible to me. And that and that has made my hype, my hype uh, and my excitement for next week's episode go through the roof um, because I'm just excited to see what they're going to do. But go ahead and comment down below. What do you what do you think about this Jack and Ashi relationship? I know that this has been shipped already by many of you fans. Uh, believe me, I've seen the fan art. Uh, people have been posting it on Facebook and Twitter ever since Samurai Jack has even premiered. Um, I've seen the fan art, so I know you people wanted this. But in my opinion, it just feels forced and and uh, rushed. Because like th this relationship could have been a thing. They could have had this be a thing, but they could have handled it better. In my opinion, like I said earlier, I think this would have been been best if, you know, after Ashi had turned to the good side, maybe if she, you know, had feelings for him a little bit. Because he's the samurai. He's this legend. He's done so much for the future. He saved so many lives. Why wouldn't you, you know, like the guy? He's a he's a great guy. But. But Ashi is, you know, the daughter of Aku. She's an assassin. She tried to kill Jack. Of course, Jack would obviously be obviously be drawn aback. And, you know, if she revealed feelings for him, he would obviously be like, Whoa, uh, you just tried to kill me a few episodes ago. And you're the daughter of Aku, who's my sworn enemy. Um, you know, I appreciate uh, the fact that, you know, you like me. I'm flattered. Um, but... Uh, you know, you're the daughter of my sworn enemy, so I can't do that. But if they did something to where, like, she saved his life or something, you know, and then he, over the course of the next few episodes, maybe started to see another side of her and started to like her, that I feel like that could have been way better handled. Because this way it just felt so rushed. They just kind of worked together on a mission, and they just kind of touched and then that was it. <clears throat> that was their relationship. I don't know. I thought it was not stupid, but I thought it was poorly handled. Um, but anyways, guys, like I said, comment down below. Tell me what you think. I'm very curious. Uh, let's have a discussion about it. Let's talk about it. So, um, yeah, I'll catch you guys next week with next episode of Samurai Jack, and I'll see you later. Bye.